Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, I think uh, we are very grateful to the Uni Universitätsmusikdirektor Sekula and uh, a few members of the Heidelberg University Orchestra, which um, embraces about 100 people in the chorus, in the great chorus, and more than 100 in the orchestra. Um, I think it, was, it produced the right spirit for, to, for tonight, and not only for tonight. I hope that it will last over the next years. Welcome to Heidelberg University. And I mentioned already this morning, not the oldest German university, but the oldest university in Germany, and young and dynamic. Again, I am pleased to see here my fellow colleagues and your delegations from Prague, Copenhagen, Warsaw, Milano, and Paris. I welcome the acting president of Charles University Prague and of for you plus until this afternoon, colleague Thomas Sima and his successive rector-elect, Professor Milena Kralikova. Milena, I saw you already. As well as Professor Hendrik Wegener, president of University of Copenhagen, Aloysi Novak, president or rector of University of Warsaw, the delegation around Elio Francini from the University of Milano and Serge Fdida, Vice President of Sorbonne University. And it's a pleasure for me that Professor Jean-Jean Bass is today with us, who co-steered the building up of 4 u Plus and the embedding of it in the League of European Research Universities, LIRU, over the last years and who retired two months ago, unfortunately. As giant in the European research policy scene and on Paris ministry floors known as Godzilla, he shaped European and French science policy over years. Jean, I'm really happy to see you as a human being and not as Godzilla, as a good friend and as an active true European. Excellency, dear colleagues, dear students, young research, dear guests, again a warm welcome in Heidelberg University here in the hall of the so-called new university erected by US alumni in 1929. We are honored by the physical attendance of special guests who illustrate the relevance of our European university engagement. I welcome His Excellence Professor Dr. Andrzej Prilewski, Ambassador of the Republic of Poland. Thank you for coming. The Consul General of the French Republic, Catherine Weber, très enchantée, madame, and the Consul General of the Italian Republic, Massimiliano Laghi. Digitally, the European Commission is virtually represented by Mrs. Temis Christofidou, the Director General of the EU, Directorate General Education, Youth, Sport and Culture, and Ms. Sophia eriksson Waterscott, Director at EU Directorate General Education, Youth, Sport and Culture as well. Our Minister, Theresia Bauer, States Minister for Science, Research and the Art of Baden-Württemberg, wanted to join us. Unfortunately, unfortunately on Friday, she announced that she cannot be here tonight because she has to participate in the coalition negotiations in Berlin. But over weekend, she sent also a video message to us. At present, the European University is financed by the EU Erasmus program and in Germany co-financed by the funds of the German Academic Exchange Service, DAAD, which belongs to the complex duties of the Federal Ministry for Foreign Affairs in Berlin. It's my privilege 
and a real pleasure to welcome tonight the president of the DAD, my fellow colleague from the University of Gießen, Professor Joy Prato Mukachi. Also, thank you very much for your time and coming to Heidelberg. The European University, in particular for U+, for U+, as one of the leading endeavors in this field, is a highly political enterprise. Therefore, we are delighted that prominent politicians on federal and state level are with us today. I could not see him already, but he, he will arrive. And therefore, I welcome in absence Dr. Stefan Kaufmann, the Innovation Commissioner Green Hydrogen by the Federal Ministry of Education and Research in Berlin, who is a real expert in research policy, who sees clearly the potential of European research universities to make the visions of the European Commission and the European Parliament reality. The States Ministry of Science, Research and the Arts Baden-Württemberg is represented by Dr. Simone Schwanitz, head of the research office. A warm welcome goes to three eminent members of the Committee for Science, Research and the Arts of the State Parliament of Baden-Württemberg, Norbert Knopf, Dr. Albrecht Schütte and Andreas Sturm. Please realize I use the alphabetic sequence in order not to prioritize any political party affiliation. Over the past days, I emphasize that Heidelberg is a science city and a knowledge pearl. The university and the city live in a kind of symbiosis. Sometimes this symbiosis needs some water. That was the reason why we had some rainfall over the last two days. But I'm very happy that the Lord Mayor of the city, Professor Eckhard Würzner, shares his time with us. As a great signal for his support, we will have a separate reception in the city later on. I'm sure it will be a fantastic apero kick-off for dinner. Thank you very much in advance. For you plus is meanwhile a legal association by German law. Six leading European comprehensive research universities, one vision. What a powerful alliance, what an amazing perspective for our 286,000 students, for our researchers, for Europe and the global society. With our students, academic staff, 24,000, with additional staff of the, with a number of 26,000. We produce research output. For example, out of more than 200 Erasmus Plus projects, in projects funded by Horizon 2020, in a quantity of 368 million euro, and out of 115 ERC projects, by the six universities. We deepen our collaboration. We create innovative models for the unified European research and education area. We convey a global perspective well rooted in European history and characterized by academic freedom and institutional autonomy. And let me emphasize, we discussed it this morning, on European level, the European universities in the moment, we have no guaranteed academic freedom and institutional autonomy. That's a gap, and we have to close it on European level if we want to build up European universities. With four flagships and a series of working groups we started, but it is amazing to see how research interests of our colleagues stimulate more and more bottom-up collaboration on all levels and all fields. After three years, 4U Plus has been well established. We know each other very well, and we start to structure sustainably the European University in education and research. 
If we would get three wishes to be fulfilled, these are a clear and enforceable commitment of the European Commission, the Parliament and the Member States, as I mentioned already, to guarantee academic freedom and institutional autonomy to the growing European universities. In the moment, it's only fixed in the European Charter for Human Rights. That's not enough. Second, a clear commitment that research and education are inseparable at European comprehensive research universities. There is no research area without coinciding, without coinciding with the European education area. In other words, there is no academic higher education without research orientation. Both must be funded. Research universities are the backbone of Europe's science landscape and are crucial for Europe's future. And third, we need trust and time. TNT, another sense. Trust and time to realize our vision and the mission for Europe. Trust in our research universities, trust in the confirmed power of our European universities. Our mission is it to create future. We created future and progress since thousand years as European universities. The Heidelberg Annual Meeting is dedicated to the readjustment of our tools and measures for the European University for U+. Highly dynamic, we develop new initiatives and involve more and more parts of our institutions to become part of our European mission. I am very grateful for accompanying us and I thank you all for your interest in the European idea, your commitment and your lasting support. Thank you very much. <clears throat> And now it's my pleasure to announce the digital welcome address to Temis Christofidou, the European Director General for Education, Youth, Sports and Culture at the European Commission, and later on the address of Minister Theresia Bauer, the Minister for Science, Research and Higher Education of the Federal State of Baden-Württemberg. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen of the General Assembly, of the four EU plus European University. It's a pleasure and an honor to be with you today. I would like to congratulate you all, the six universities of the four EU plus Alliance for being pioneers of European universities. I very much welcome your ambition to become a truly integrated European university system. Your decision to set up a permanent legal entity represents an important step forward in becoming a Euro European university that is more sustainable and in which cooperation is stronger and deeper than ever before. We welcome your pledge for higher level of mutual relations and cooperation. In turn, this could bring you more simplification, pooling, visibility, accessibility and efficiency. Your commitment to further integrate is demonstrated as well through the establishment of your common approach to education and research in your flagship initiatives around health, Europe, information science and sustainable development. I'm glad to see that mobility for students and staff remains at the core of your work in the Alliance as a powerful catalyst for learning and development. Creating platforms to let knowledge flow within the alliance, but also exchanging with the ecosystems of your universities is, I believe, one of the most powerful tools to deliver on the ambition of this initiative. I want to thank you for your valuable contributions to the consultation process on the further rollout of the European universities. Now is the time to shape the future and we could not envisage it any other way but progressing together with you. 
Our objective is to continue supporting the selected European universities that are successful through the Erasmus Plus program in synergy with Horizon Europe and other EU funds. We will also continue to encourage member states to co-finance the initiative. Sustainability of existing alliances and support to new alliances will be offered as of 2022 through a competitive call to be assessed based on qualitative criteria. We hope to publish this call at the late, latest end of this year. So, what are the main elements of the compromise proposal currently on the table based on the consultation so far with member states, stakeholders and European universities? First, let me be clear. The quality of the alliance and the work plan is the crucial point in the evaluation. We need a deep and sustainable cooperation between universities with joint educational activities that can benefit a majority of your students at bachelor, master and doctoral level. Second, we propose higher and more long-term funding. We understand that it is crucial for higher education institutions to have a long-term perspective as the necessary transformations need time and a lot of resources. That is why we're proposing bridge funding of four plus two years under Erasmus Plus based on quality criteria. Third, we have heard the, the sector's call to keep an inclusive approach. We want to respect the diversity of the higher education landscape across Europe and allow for different models of cooperation and outreach. For that, we're considering giving opportunities to higher education institutions to join existing alliances or form new ones. It is of course up to each European university to decide whether they wish to expand or not. This is optional. We expect all European universities to reach out and share their outcomes and experiences with the wider higher education, research and innovation community so that the entire sector can benefit from this flagship initiative. Broadening the geographical scope is another important step in the same direction. Higher education institutions from the Bologna countries will now be able to join a European university as associate partner. Fourth, to realize the European university's ambition, you need an enabling environment at all levels, in your institutions, at national and European levels. Therefore, we are working at European level to provide recommendations to member states to facilitate transnational cooperation, building on the European University's experience. We thank you for your input in the consultation process. We will come forward early next year with a proposal for a Council recommendation on building bridges for effective European higher education cooperation. We wish to support higher education institutions to work closer together. This means to tackle the most pressing issues, promoting a smoother transnational cooperation based on the lessons learned so far from the European Universities Alliances and other stakeholders. The key objective is to support member states to set the strategic course for ambitious, deeper and seamless transnational cooperation among higher education institutions in Europe. More flexible approaches are needed, in particular on joint educational activities to allow universities to be creative and innovative. To achieve this, one should, where possible, build on available tools, including those from the Bologna process and on new European tools and frameworks under development, such as the upcoming European framework on micro-credentials. At European level, we will also continue our own work. We're exploring the gradual development of a European degree, aiming to certify the transformative higher education experience offered by European universities. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for all your enriching and ambitious work. You're successfully contributing to transforming higher education systems in Europe. Thank you. Dear ladies and gentlemen, you are meeting to make the idea and promise of the European University a reality. I can hardly imagine a greater goal. The same 
will go far beyond higher education. It will change the university experience for countless young people across the continent, enabling a new future of mobility and scientific exchange. It will push us to another level of European cooperation and innovation. It will spotlight our university as globally competitive destinations. And most importantly, it will bring us as a continent closer together. That is a scientific future that I am looking forward to. And this is why we in the state of Baden-Württemberg are going above and beyond to support our six universities involved in European university alliances. You can count on us to continue to push your goal into the future. Given how quickly this plan has developed, we clearly can expect great things from idea to reality in only a few years. You're setting the standard for European innovation. So with this in mind, I wish you the best of success for your annual meeting of the 4EU Plus Alliance. I hope you all enjoy your time in beautiful Heidelberg. And thank you to Rector Eitel and Heidelberg University for hosting. Thank you to everyone from the Alliance for your time and for your support. We are all excited to see what ideas the 4EU Plus European University Alliance develop next. We in the state of Baden-Württemberg stand right beside you as you pioneer the future of European universities. Well, dear Professor Eitel, dear colleagues, dear ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to thank you, Professor Eitel, for your kind and generous invitation. As president of the German Academic Exchange Service, DAAD, the world's biggest funding organization for international mobility, and at the same time, the German National Agency for the Erasmus Program, it is always a privilege to be at the University of Heidelberg the oldest university in Germany. I should also mention here, because this may not be known to everyone here, that there is a special link, a special historical bond, if you so wish, between us, DAD, and this very university. DAD was established in 1925, so in four years' time we will celebrate our 100th anniversary nothing compared to your 600 plus years, I'm fully aware of that. But in 1925, it all started with two students of this very university, two Heidelberg students, who came back from the United States after this traumatic experience of the First World War and were so in awe of their American experience that they collected 13 scholarships for young students, young people to travel to America and to get this intercultural encounter that they had experienced before. It all started with 13 scholarships collected by Heidelberg students. So this is a historical link between our two institutions, Professor Eitel, that will always last and will always be a special bond between us. This university, as you all know, was founded in 1386 at a time when academic cooperation and intellectual exchange, of course, already existed, but certainly within a limited scope. Today, international mobility at the individual level and international collaboration at the institutional level are prerequisites for excellence in research, teaching, transfer, and all additional missions of modern universities. The University of Heidelberg represents this very idea of excellence through international exchange and through strong partnerships like few other German universities. And what holds true for the University of Heidelberg holds true for all other universities in your four EU plus European University Alliance as well. The universities of Copenhagen, Milan, Prague, Sorbonne and Warsaw. 
This meeting in itself, I feel, is a symbol of success for the long way of international co cooperation and especially for European integration, which your universities have already accomplished. And I truly believe that for the future advancement of all European universities, all European university alliances, your alliance certainly is a flagship project. In view of this, I feel truly honored to share with you a few thoughts on the European universities, a few thoughts on the European universities initiatives tonight, an initiative that has brought unprecedented dynamics into institutional academic collaboration across Europe. And we heard it already after the two pilot rounds, we are now at a crucial point at a crucial point as we need to regain momentum in this initiative for the next phase, the next round. Allow me to go back to the original vision of the concept of European universities outlined in 27 by President Emmanuel Macron in his Sorbonne speech. I'm sure that you can probably uh, replicate this speech uh, word by word. But I will get back to this original idea for U European universities at different places. Now, as you all know, Macron's vision was based on the conviction that, and I quote, le ciment le plus fort de l'Union sera toujours la culture et le savoir. And he continues as follows. Je propose la création d'universités européennes qui seront un réseau d'universités de plusieurs pays d'Europe mettant en place un parcours où chacun de leurs étudiants étudiera à l'étranger et suivra des cours dans deux ans au moins. Just as I am doing now. Des universités européennes qui seront aussi des lieux d'innovation pédagogique, de recherche d'excellence. Nous devons nous fixer d'ici à 2024 en construire au moins une vingtaine. Mais nous devons, dès la prochaine rentrée universitaire, structurer les premières avec de véritables semestres européennes et de véritables diplômes européens. Well, today, three years remain to achieve this vision. In times of growing populism, and the rise of menacing nationalism, a shared European identity is needed, as we all know, in academia, as in many other places, more urgently than ever. Universities, our institutions, are at the center of promoting this ideal in the minds of the younger generations. Without any doubt, a lot has been achieved today. The vast response and high numbers of applications in Germany and our European partner countries are a clear sign that Macron's initiative came at the right time and met the demand for more Europe in the higher education landscape across Europe. Within the European Universities Initiative, new high quality, high caliber strategic partnerships have been established between higher education institutions across Europe. Networks and alliances such as 4EU Plus have fostered transnational cooperation and strengthened European bonds. These strategic partnerships are clearly of advantage for higher education institutions, for universities. Having partners, having strategic partners, it becomes easier to negotiate for a common goal, to benefit from experiences and lessons learned from joint experiences, and to make use of synergies when it comes to sharing resources in research and teaching. Of course, one can also make strategic use of different strategic partners to advance one's individual goals and in the best case create a win-win situation. But does this widespread idea and concept of strategic partnerships 
really fully live up to Macron's vision? And uh, let me be a little provocative here, because we are talking about the next round of applications and so on. Is the Macron initiative only about finding partners that one needs for a successful application for additional funding? Or alternatively, is it only about the increasingly prestigious label European University? I firmly believe that this would fall short of the vision President Macron had in mind. A vision, I feel, whose ambition can hardly be exaggerated. Let me in this context remind all of us of another key message from his Sorbonne speech. C'est cette vie collégiale que vous aurez vécu à Paris, à Milan, à Berlin ou à Gdansk. C'est cela qui compte, ce qui fera ce ciment européen, ce fil insécable qui tient l'Europe des histoires communes. This vision goes far beyond funding and reputation, I find. This metaphor of the unbreakable tie that holds Europe together goes far beyond strategic considerations and partnerships for joint applications. There is much more included in Macron's vision. I therefore suggest to refer to and put into reality Macron's vision not so much as strategic partnerships, but as institutional friendships. Now, what is meant by an institutional friendship and how can it be achieved? I'm sure that each of you could immediately describe the special qualities of your best friend in the private sphere. Generally speaking, a friendship is an emotional relationship based on trust and shared values. Friends have a joint history and know that they can rely on each other when necessary, independently of the benefit involved. This can be transferred to the institutional level too. In this sense, institutional friendship can be understood as a conceptual, intellectual, and emotional bond between universities in Europe. In essence then, a European University Alliance would thus have a truly emotional basis and the institutional friends involved would share an eagerness to foster joint activities for the sake of these joint activities themselves and would also be willing to provide cross-institutional help whenever needed. European university alliances would thus exist independently of the funding provided by the Macron Initiative and there would be a shared and joint identity that the institutional friends involved would develop every single institution would commit itself to an alliance with a common destiny. Against the background of the ongoing discussion about how to develop the European University Alliances further, the question obviously arises as to how institutional friendships can emerge. Will it be through strengthening formal institutionalization is even a European legal identity of the alliance desirable or necessary? Is setting up joint research structures the right path to follow? Do we need to increase the number of joint study courses and double degree programs? And with what European or national status? Is an increased mobility of scientists and students the key element? Well, it is not for me to provide you with the corresponding answers for your alliance, but I feel that all European university alliances need to ask themselves what their vision is. My overarching vision I have subsumed under the notion of institutional friendship. Institutional friendships are as individual and diverse as personal friendships. However, it is not the form of the friendship that is decisive but the responsibility to fill it with life. Let me reiterate that to me, the essential issue is to develop a European component as part of our institutional identity, as part of the identity of all institutions involved in a European alliance. 
and the 4EU plus European University Alliance, your alliance, could certainly be in the vanguard of reaching out to this particular vision. What are the next steps? Of course, the task is to develop the appropriate governance structures and administrative platforms and the most suitable structures for research and teaching, as well as ideal schemes for the mobility of researchers and students. The various options and preferences are currently being discussed in a supranational co-creation process under the auspices of the European Commission. And I have noticed with great interest that you too have spent a lot of time yesterday, today, in various workshops on defining the way forward for your individual alliance. Therefore, let me, after the vision I have shared with you, briefly address some of the concrete issues at hand from the point of view of the DAD, obviously. First, increased and continuous financial support from a range of funding sources is needed to advance the transformative vision of the European universities further. The European Universities Initiative must support and strengthen all missions, education, research, innovation, the contribution to society, while ensuring the flexibility of all measures and respecting the diversity of institutional profiles and the goals of the individual alliances via a bottom-up approach. In this context, it is of advantage that since 2019, the new commissioner has been in charge of both missions, education and research. Accordingly, the European Commission should promote synergies, strengthening interaction between the complementary programs Erasmus Plus and Horizon Europe. Education and research, research and education, as was pointed out earlier today, are intricately intertwined at universities and should therefore always have the same value and weight. Secondly, it is important to give priority to a qualitative deepening of our alliances, to a qualitative deepening of existing alliances over quantitative expansion. Quality before quantity must be our guiding principle for the steps ahead must be the guiding principle also for the European Commission, I find. Thirdly, more national accompanying programs are needed in the European member states to support the European Universities Initiative so as to level out the unequal framework conditions among the varying European countries. The German national accompanying program of the European University Networks administered by DAD can serve as a blueprint since it successfully supports universities in Germany as they seek to achieve greater Europeanization. Fortunately, our Federal Ministry of Education and Research already confirmed its willingness to continue the national accompanying program in a top-level meeting we had at the beginning of September. Ladies and gentlemen, when I look around, I see representatives of some of the oldest and greatest universities in Europe. You all stand in the tradition of pioneers, optimists, and visionaries. We all believe in the power of research, of teaching and learning, and of critical thinking, and in the value of our shared European heritage and culture. Thus, I'm sure that we all are eager to drive forward the European higher education area so as to improve people's and future generations' lives on our continent. With President Macron's speech at the Sorbonne, the vision of European universities was born. So far, we have started by forming strategic partnerships to strengthen linkages between universities in Europe. The way from here must be to further promote and consolidate our European identity through joint research and teaching. In my personal vision, the European universities are places of mutual inspiration, educational innovation, and excellent research. I strongly believe that this vision becomes reality when strategic partners turn into institutional friends.
Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor Mukachi. I uh, twittered him um, that sometimes institutional friends are almost married. So um, I think we are institutional friends and we are on the way to get at least, um, yeah, we're in a, in a certain, yeah, we are like, like the first young man, or when a young man for the first time is visiting the parents of uh, the deeply loved, for, for the first time, deeply loved young lady. So it's a little bit like that. So we see we have a mission, and we need sometimes courage to cross the threshold. Thank you very much for your keynote speech. So it's a great honor for me now to honor two colleagues. I will start with colleague Professor Sima from Prague University. Some people are happy if professors will retire. Not we. Today, he handed over the destiny of For You Plus to my hands. So I'm responsible for For You Plus over the next year. And then we will see, um, I will find a colleague who will take it from myself. So it's, a, it's not a burden, it's a joy, but I know about the responsibility. So, Thomas, please come to me. Tomasz, you have, uh, we all, we, you have to know that uh, Tomasz um, is a physician. And the physician always tries to modify the destiny. The destiny of the patient, hopefully to the best. And of course, the destiny of the portemonnaie of himself. So that's the ambivalence of a physician not of a university leader, not of a rector or a president of, of a prestigious university as Charles University is. I mentioned before that Heidelberg University is the third oldest German university, but the real oldest German university is Prague University. The oldest German university founded in the Holy Roman Empire by German nation some years earlier, but in the same century. So. And only Vienna is in between, but we forget Vienna tonight. So anyway, I, I'm looking forward to you. So in order to know a little bit more about the destiny of humans, the prince of the Palatinate in, in the changing time from medieval times to modern times, early modern times, he tried to support scientists at Heidelberg University to create an instrument, a tool, to look to the future, to predict the future, and to find out the destiny of the nobles, of the world rulers, as he was. He was the first elector of the emperor in the empire. So, and um, this... Schicksalsbuch, the booklet or the book to find out about the destiny of men and women is in the university library and for special friends we provided facsimile. So here you have uh, a manual how to use it and here you can you can exemplify and you can predict your own future. You see, with different possibilities. It's also a test whether Thomas 
remained a scientist because doing it, studying the booklet and the manual is not really easy. But I wish you, in, after, in, in, not yet, in the time after you have retired, or uh, you will retire after or in the next year and later on, I wish you a f funny hours. Try it with a good glass of red wine or white wine. Or a beer. Or, uh, of course, in Prague, a beer, of <laughs> course. Oh, sorry, sorry, it was, uh, that was my, my mistake. I wish you all the best, and I would like to thank you for your engagement for, for your plus. As we heard, for the institutional friendship to everybody of us, for your efforts, all the best for your future. Thank, thank you very you. much, and you are always welcome in Heidelberg, even thank retired. You. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Bernard, thank, thank you so much, and we have a centuries collaboration between our universities. But as I physicians, when we are uh, coming up to the General Assembly in the morning, uh, Bernard mentioned that I am maybe the few centimeters higher because the responsibility uh, it's handed to, uh, to Bernard. And now I'm looking that it's maybe a few centimeters less uh, <laughs> about the resp responsibility of it. Thank you very much, and I, I believe that uh, and know that uh, for you past will be will be growing up and the friendship will be more strengthened. All the best. Now, the next candidate being honoured. Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, that's a normal starting point. It's my privilege, it's my pleasure, and it's my honor that Jean-Jean Bass is with us today. I mentioned it already two times. Jean, thank you very much for following our invitation to participate here. Looking back, we met as LIRO partners, the League of European Research Universities. It's a lobby organization in Brussels for research universities in Europe. We met as LIRO partners in Glion several years ago. Wonderful site, top of the lake, not far away, oh, some kilometers from Lausanne. Wonderful environment. And we spoke about the merger of Sorbonne, Université of the Sorbonne, and Université Paris 6. For the Marie Curie. A fantastic endeavor. And I asked him, it must be very difficult to merge such, an, such two institutions with renowned scientists, and all these scientists have their own will. We spoke about this merger, and we spoke about the potential of the new TGV or I strain connection between Heidelberg, Mannheim, and Paris. A little bit more than three hours to travel. We saw both the potential of our comprehensive research universities, now comprehensive in Paris, and the added value by intensified collaboration. Therefore, we decided to create an European research axis between Paris and Heidelberg. It served as part of our excellent strategies at both places, too. With the famous speech of President Macron, Professor Mukachi already mentioned and cited it, with the famous speech of President Macron in your university, we saw that our vision became more political and we decided to prepare our access for the European University. The first step was to involve Milan in Copenhagen to for you, because these, that was obvious, we met in the Liro context, and then to for you plus by Prague and Warsaw. Heidelberg said a little bit so and a little bit so. 
At Paris, a little bit so, a little bit so, and then it was Prague and Russia. 4U Plus was born in 2019. The big advantage of 4U Plus is a coincidence with Liru CE7. This means, first, that we meet more often than only organized by 4U Plus. Second, we are more or less homogeneous and prominent comprehensive research universities. Everybody is attractive to everybody. We share the same interests. Step by step, we advance and go forward. You were the giant in Paris. You are Godzilla on the floors. So we are very happy to bring forward for you plus under your leadership. Your merits shape the European research landscape enduringly. We took the leadership baton at first, St. Thomas Sima, and at the same time, you see as the board of directors of the LIRO. Chairing LIRO and for you plus, at the same time, gave you a leading position in the European academic scenery, and you have played this role in a brilliant way. Sometimes, Sean, I thought that several airlines depend on your travel budget. The success of 4U Plus is unthinkable without your leadership. Your merits, I mentioned it already, shape the European research landscape enduringly. For Heidelberg University, Prince Ruprecht of the Palatinate recruited in 1386 Marcellus von Ingen, the former rector of Paris University, at first rector of Heidelberg University. You see, the ties between both universities are long-lasting, well-established, and deeply rooted in European history. Marcellus was a prominent brain in theology and well-positioned in the networks of nobles and the three popes which struggled against each other. As I mentioned before, you remind us of Marcellus because, provided with the nickname Godzilla, you ruled the floors of French ministries, and as a scientific landmark, you illuminated the academic ecosystems in Europe. Now you have retired. And I hope that your family can live with the fact being ruled by you. With regard to your merits, Heidelberg University decided to award you with the Great University Medal of Heidelberg University. I congratulate and will read the certificate for you. Please. Thank you. Relieved from he's, the task. He's a giant. <laughs> so the medal. And now I, I will read the certificate. Die Ruprecht Karls Universität Heidelberg verleiht Herrn Professor Dr. Jean Jean Bass in Anerkennung seiner langjährigen Verdienste um die Zusammenarbeit zwischen der Universität Heidelberg und der Sorbonne Universität sowie für seinen herausragenden Einsatz in der Gründungsphase der Europäischen Universität for You Plus Alliance die große Universitätsmedaille Heidelberg den 4. November congratulations Thank Thank you. Very much. It's not so easy so I hand over to him Good evening, everybody. I have to deserve my Godzilla's nickname, but it's a French uh, nickname. It's my relationship with the uh, cabinet of the minister. But it was almost the same at the beginning with Temis Christophe Fidou, and uh, after a while of fight uh, between ourselves, uh, then we agreed uh, on, on this common vision. As Godzilla, I understand now, Bernard, why you ask me to tell in few words, few, not like you, few. Uh, you ask me to tell in few words the story uh, of the beginning of For You Plus, because you've just told it to us. But even if I am older, I have better memories. So we started effectively in Glion. 
And that's quite important because we were in, also in the Leroux discussion about the building of the European knowledge area and how to strengthen it. And we were quite motivated by our excellence initiatives in both countries uh, to develop the European dimension of our universities. And then we were also concerned by the geographical divide in Europe. And for EU, not for EU plus, for EU was first with Prague and Warsaw, uh, we, who were our uh, partners of uh, C7, which are the research intensive uh, universities of Central Europe. And because we really uh, shared the vision that uh, we have only one horizon in each of our institutional country, it's Europe. And that uh, we have to build Europe. It's not international cooperation. It's really building the Europe uh, community uh, by uh, making people uh, working together. And then, of course, uh, we started to decide to build the alliance before the Macron speech. And as French people are always criticizing their politics, I just would say that uh, the, the big merit of President Macron was to propose the concept. There was not much in. He spoke one minute of European uh, universities in a speech of one hour at the Sorbonne, where the rectors sat in the back of the amphitheater. So don't illuminate what was the thing. The, I, I say really, I think really that the merit was uh, to uh, uh, the commissioner and to the DGAC to set the EUN uh, project. But it was not comfortable for us because it was focused on higher education and on uh, student mobility, but mostly on higher education. Oh, we are not higher education institutions. We are as much, as you said, uh, research uh, institutions. And as universities, as uh, little beasts, if we want to be efficient, we have to walk on our four legs research, education, innovation, and service to society. And if we don't work on uh, our four legs, we won't serve our countries and our continent, the Europe. So it's a, a good start to have this EUN call by the DGEAC, but we, and we are very grateful uh, to the Commission and to the Member State to match uh, with the uh, uh, Commission funding, but it's not enough because our project is a comprehensive one and our added value for education is based on the best research. So no compromise on research, on excellence in research, and no compromise uh, on uh, research-based education. So that was the the mission we, we, we develop for our uh, university. Of course, uh, with uh, the, the fantastic added value of uh, Copenhagen Milan to complete the geographical divide to the north and to the south with two uh, among the, the best research universities in Europe. Uh, we applied for the UN because we don't have to, to, to uh, to miss uh, the first train of, uh, of the project, but still with the opinion that we could be only efficient with this comprehensive program. And what is very important, in, we, we saw that in the, uh, in the, in the meeting today uh, with the report of the, of the different flagships, our flagships integrate research and education in the same move. The, other um, element which is still very important is to uh, develop uh, the free circulation of students, of staff, academic and not academic, among our institutions. Of course, the COVID make a, a, a small break on this initiative, but we are still uh, 
uh, redeveloping, uh, where we finalize the instruments and we are still redeveloping the, the circulation. But for that, we need the help of uh, the Commission and even most of the member states to remove the bureaucratic and uh, obsolete obstacles to this free circulation. We could do our best our, the, with the regulation of our universities in the limit of our autonomy, but we really need, need to be helped very uh, precisely by our different government to allow this free circulation without limit. So I will stop on this aspect for the future. I would say that um, I take this honor uh, as a collective honor to for you plus and I would like to share uh, the, the award uh, with uh, Serge Dida uh, because without him who spent so uh, all his energy and all his time uh, in this project and uh, without whom we won't uh, succeed in the development of for you plus so I get, I get that Serge deserves the same applause that, than me uh, from uh, the, the Alliance. And I would say that, and you won't uh, be mad at me uh, saying that, that the, the best award, I'm very proud from the, the medal, but the best award was the report by the flagships and by the, the committee uh, this morning for making uh, on the track uh, for you plus, it was an idea at the beginning, it's now a reality, and uh, it's very vivid, it's uh, very exciting, and the only uh, advice I could give as an old man, uh, free and uh, happy to be uh, free, uh, is now to embed more and more for you plus in each of our university and to deepen our relationships, our friendship, our collaboration, rather than to expand and to dilute. So we have to disseminate within our institution to embed for a U plus. And of course, we will keep our identity of uh, Heidelberg, Copenhagen, Milano, Charles, Warsaw, Sorbonne, because we have hundreds of years of uh, existence and that the best uh, uh, marks we could have in the world, but we will join that with for you plus, and it would be uh, an, a fantastic added value for the future of our universities. Thank you very much. Now some music, let's say one sentence to the org. It's the biggest org outside of churches in southern Germany and it could be restored by a donation in 2011 when we um, renovated the whole complex of the so-called new university. So we are we are happy that we can use it and we are proud on our musicians. Thank you very much for the music. We are keen to hear it. Asekula, Sie können loslegen.
So, thank you very much to the Universitätsmusik Director Michael Sekula and a small selection of the Collegium Musicum, the orchestra of the university. I think with Mozart ending such a day with hard work, with a lot of networking, with creating new ideas is the right way. Thank you very much to the musicians. And now it's my privilege to tell you that all our European guests today are invited by the Lord Mayor of Heidelberg University in the City Hall about 10 minutes from here so we can go like a we call it a Lefron Leichnamsprozession, so we can go in a, in a certain um, academic uh, feeling across the old city downtown Heidelberg. But unfortunately, there are some um, roadworks and so on. Please uh, be careful. But anyway, um, we are very grateful for the opportunity to have this reception as in, the, um, in the city hall. Thank you very much for that. And um, later on, we will meet in the Prince Karl Palais for dinner. So I thank you very much for engagement, not only today. I hope that it will be, I'm sure, it will be a wonderful evening. And 
Tomorrow we will meet again. Thank you very much for your attendance.